Hello and welcome to Projective Geometry. My name is Jaisal. Hi everyone! In this video, we will talk about three configurations which are 1. Phenoplane, 2. Papus configuration, 3. Desargues configuration. But before we proceed, let me first define the following. First is Axiom. In mathematics or logic, an axiom is an unprovable rule or first principle accepted as true because it is self-evident or particularly useful. Mathematicians assume that axioms are true without being able to prove them. However, this is not as problematic as it may seem because axioms are either definitions or clearly obvious. For example, an axiom could be A plus B is equals to B plus A for any two numbers A and B. As simple as that. Next term is collinear. Three or more points are said to be collinear if they lie on a single straight line. Next term is incident or incidence. In geometry, an incidence relation is a heterogeneous relation that captures the idea being expressed when phrases such as a point lies on a line or a line is contained in a plane are used. Just remember these points that define incident. A line that passes through a point is said to be incident to that point. Next is, a line that passes through a plane at a single point is said to be incident to that plane. Lastly, a plane that intersects another plane is said to be incident to that other plane, and that is incident. So, let us proceed to the next term, which is configuration. In mathematics, specifically projective geometry, a configuration in the plane consists of a finite set of points, and the finite arrangement of lines, such that each point is incident to the same number of lines, and each line is incident to the same number of points. Last term is perspective. Perspective is a way to give an illusion of three-dimensional depth when drawing on a flat surface. And that is the definition of terms. And now, let us start discussing the first configuration, which is the Feno plane. The Feno plane is the finite projective plane of order 2. It is the finite projective plane with the smallest possible number of points and lines, consisting of 7 points and 7 lines, with 3 points on every line and 3 lines through every point. It was named after Gino Feno, and this is Gino Feno. Which is, Gino Feno was an Italian mathematician best known as the founder of finite geometry. And there are five axioms of the Feno plane. 1. There exists at least one line. 2. Every line there exists exactly three points. 3. Not all points lie on the same line. 4. For two distinct points, there exists exactly one line on both of them. Last, 5. Each two lines have at least one point on both of them. So, for you to understand the axioms of the Feno plane very well, let me show you illustrations. First is, there exists at least one line. So, I will put one line here, there. And next is, every line there exists exactly three points. So, I will put three points in this line. Ta-da! That is three points. Next is, not all points lie on the same line. It only means that there will be a point here that will be connected to these three points. And it will look like this. And before we proceed to the fourth action, let me go back here. Every line there exists exactly three points. So, because we created a three lines here, let us put points here so there will be exactly three points in each line so it will look like this and that's it and now for two distinct points there exists exactly one line on both of them so as you can see there are still two distinct there are still points here that are not connected with each, with each other so let us connect them with the line based on the action for 
so it will result to this and now axiom 5 states that each two lines have at least one point on both of them meaning um oh my god meaning this line and this line intersects at this point another this line and this line intersects at this one point and so on and so forth and as you can see on the on this figure there are still points that are not connected with each other so let us connect this to this this to this this point this point so it will look like this and this is how Feno plane looks like as you can see we already established two facts of the Feno plane which is Feno plane has seven points one two three four five six seven and Feno plane has seven lines one two three four five six and seven by the way Feno plane all lines in Feno plane are straight lines and the circle here in the middle just looks like a circle to us since we are looking at a representation in the Euclidean plane but all lines in the Feno plane are straight lines and that is the axiom of the Feno plane and this is how Feno plane looks like to sum up Feno plane Feno plane defined as the smallest finite projective plane because a Feno plane is said to have order of 2. Next is, a finite plane of order n has n plus 1 points on each line for a projective plane, meaning on each line of the projective plane it has n plus 1 points. Since Feno plane has order of 2, then we substitute the 2 here in the n which will result to n plus 1 or 2 plus 1 equals to 3 so each line of the Feno plane will have 3 points next is a projective plane of order n has n squared plus n plus 1 points overall or in total so because Feno plane has order of 2 let us substitute it here 2 squared plus 2 plus 1 is equals to 7 so as you can see it is true because Feno plane has 7 points in total so that is Feno plane and now let us proceed to the second configuration which is the Pappus configuration Pappus configuration is a configuration of 9 points and 9 lines in the Euclidean plane with 3 points per line and 3 lines through each point this configuration was named after Pappus of Alexandria and this is Pappus. Pappus who lives in Alexandria around 300 years before Christ and he was one of the last great Greek mathematicians of antiquity. Pappus wrote a volume called Collection consisting of 8 books but only 7 survived and written on one of his books is Pappus configuration or Pappus theorem which looks like this and based on the definition available which is it consists of nine points and nine lines as you can see here the Pappus configuration consists of nine points one two three four five six seven eight and nine it also consists of nine lines one two the pink one three four the green one five six the blue one seven eight and lastly this line nine and that is Pappus configuration and it also said a while ago that it has three points per line and three lines through each point which is correct because in each point it has three lines one two three and on each line it has three points line g have point one point a point b and point c and so on and so forth and that is how Pappus configuration was defined and Pappus configuration it states that if a b c are collinear and a b the lowercase letter a b and c are collinear too then x is logically equivalent to the product of a b and b a meaning uh, the intersection of a b and b a is letter x and next is y is logically equivalent to the product of a c and c a 
So you can see here, A, C, and C8, their intersection is Y. Lastly, Z is logically equivalent to the product of C, B, and B, C. C, C, B, and B, C. And their intersection is Z. Then, X, Y, Z are collinear. Next is, and the line containing the three intersection points X, Y, and Z is called the Pappus line. So, this line is called the Pappus line. The line U is called the Pappus line. To sum up Pappus configuration, it only states that if you have two straight lines with points A, B, C and lowercase letter A, B, C and they are connected like this in this illustration, then you can draw a line to their intersections and that is called the Pappus line. And that is Pappus configuration all about. So now let us proceed to the last uh, configuration of this video which is the Desargues configuration. In geometry, the Desargues configuration is a configuration of 10 points and 10 lines with 3 points per line and 3 lines per point. It was named after Girard Desargues and closely related to Desargues theorem which proves the existence of configuration and this is Girard Desargues. Gerard de Sargs is a French mathematician and engineer who is considered one of the founders of projective geometry. And this is the illustration of de Sargs configuration. Based on the definition, de Sargs have 10 points which is which are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 which is true. And it also states that it has 10 lines 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And again, that is the Sargs configuration. And the Sargs configuration states that if two triangles are perspective from a point, then they are perspective from a line. As you can see here in the figure or in the illustration. The first triangle is the uppercase letter A, B, and C. And the next triangle is the lowercase letters A, B, and C. And their line, the intersection of their lines is called the center of perspectivity here. And the intersection of their lines below, when you connect this line, when you connect this line, when you connect this intersection rather, you will create a line and that is called the axis of perspectivity. And that proves that if two triangles are perspective from a point, then they are perspective from a line. And that is the Sargs configuration. And that's all. I hope you understand what is Phenoplane, Papus configuration, and the Sargs configuration. Thank you for watching and goodbye.